Hi everyone, it's a ticket to Christ. Thank you for tuning back in. We're starting on a new series. We're going to be studying out discipline and this is going to be intense. Um, you know, discipline can span from emotions. So disciplining your emotions so that you're able to manage your emotions. So you're not going to be flying off the handle and, uh, or if you're threatened to, with offense, you're going to respond from the spirit. So those are things that we're, you know, going to learn how to do uh, through the word of God. Discipline in eating, um, discipline in um, sleeping patterns, you know, work patterns, how we spend our time, uh, where we focus our energy. You know, a lot of times um, as Christians, the reason why our lives fall into defeat is because we're not disciplined. That the patterns that we've developed in our lives are not healthy for us. And um, for most people, it's not that they need a miracle. It's just that they need to just change, change the excesses and get balanced and learn how to discipline eating, you know, what we say, what we think and what we focus in on. And so this study is going to cover all of that. We're looking at John chapter six and we're reading from 26 to 29 it says, uh, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me because you ye so, saw the miracles and because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might do the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Um, okay, and you might be wondering, well, what does that have to do with discipline? And that is a very good question. But I think what it has to do with it is because it's drawing our eyes to the source of our life, of who the source of our life should be, and that is Jesus. And that's the point Jesus was making here to them, that he is the source of life. He's not just... It's not just about that you can get some food, good food from, from me, Jesus was telling them, but I'm the source of life and you're to feed off of me. Um, just the broader context, and I'll drop the scripture below. It's in John, the broader context of John 6. Jesus had just taken five loaves and two fishes and he multiplied them and fed 5,000 people. And the food was so delicious, they came running after him, seeking him you know, looked all over the place because they wanted more of the food. Um, they completely missed the boat, the, the whole, it just went right over their heads that this was the son of God. This is God walking on the face of the earth, walking on his creation in front of them. And they're there focusing on food, you know, can we get some more bread and fish? <laughs> yeah. And uh, running after Jesus, not for a relationship with Christ, but for the bread and fish. And so somewhere along the line, they got it twisted. They got the source, the source of who sustains them. Uh, they did not understand that. They got the whole thing twisted. So Jesus talked about that the work of God is to believe on whom he had sent. And so in trying to live a disciplined life, we have to come from a place from the source, from who we believe in who Jesus is and life by the spirit because it's if you're if you're living a life from the source from the spirit of Jesus you're going to be in step with the spirit and this and Jesus was very disciplined he was incredibly disciplined you know but in order to do that your life has to be anchored in him and he was explaining that to them but they didn't get it if you jump over to um St. John chapter 6 but if you look at verse um you pick up at like verse 53, the Lord says to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. My flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. 
as the living father had sent me and I live by the father so that he eateth me so he that eateth me even he shall live by me right so the lord is saying that life is means to consume him that we have to consume his life that's where we get our life through consuming him and when he was talking about his flesh and blood, because that, that is the core of a human person's life, right? So he's giving an analogy here so that to, to strongly press upon and demonstrate the importance of being consumed by, of consuming him, that our life is one whereby we're consuming the life of Christ, he in us, um, us in him, right? But they did not understand that. They thought he was... I guess they got it twisted, they got offended. Um, and Jesus had to explain to them in verse uh, 63, he was speaking of spiritual matters. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Jesus is saying to them, I didn't mean that you should actually come and bite my hand and try and eat it. You know, I'm talking to you about a spiritual issue. And they got offended and it said that they walked away from him. Right in verse sixty, it says, "Many therefore of his of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it?" And they were offended and fell away from Jesus. Right, and so um, that Jesus, all of those hundreds of people or thousands of people that came, walked away because Jesus is not looking for crowds to follow him. The life of a disciple of Jesus Christ is not a life that a lot of people uh, follow. And when when they are confronted with the actual words of the Lord, with the Lord, what the Lord's heart really is and what he wants us to do, and the Lord says, yes, I do need you to love your enemies. Yes, I do need you to be humble. Yes, I do need you to be disciplined. Yes, this is, this is who I am. I'm disciplined. I'm humble. I'm meek. I'm loving. I'm compassionate. I'm good. I have peace. You know, I'm long suffering, I'm patient, I know how to rein in my emotions. When the Lord brings that to us, a lot of people can walk away from it because it is hard. It is hard when somebody is offending you, you're doing something good to them, and they're offending you, and you have to humble yourself and literally think through okay, what would Jesus be like here? How can I make peace? How can I be a peacemaker? Because the Lord says, Blessed are the peacemakers. Uh, how can I be a peacemaker? How can I make it? How can I put aside these emotions in me that are saying this person is being just really not fair and I'm trying to do something good for them and they're not help, you know, they're not responding why. You know, you think about that, especially when you're on the job. At least for me, I run into situations like that where you're trying to be helpful, or you're trying to be um, a good worker. And the other person views it as a threat because they feel threatened. They don't understand that this is what a Christian is supposed to be like. Maybe they've never seen it, right? And so being disciplined, you're able to temper your responses in the middle of an offense. You temper your responses rather in the middle of an offense. You're able to control anger, rein it in, keep it under the Lordship of Jesus, you're able to walk away from conversations that are not healthy, that are gossipy. You're able to watch what it is you're eating daily and not just, you know, be excessive. Sometimes it's not so much even what we eat, it's just how much of it we eat um, and uh, how, how frequently, right? Um, what we think you're able to... Um, Rein that in, you know, through when the thoughts are coming, you don't just allow them to reign in your head, the accusatory thoughts, the negative thoughts, the thoughts that um, are saying negative things either about yourself or others. You're able to pray. You're able to pray for that person. You're able to ask God for mercy on them and on you. And you're able to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. All of those things are parts of what it takes to live a disciplined life. And so we're going to go through all of that in this in this um, session um, of the dis looking at the discipline of Christ and looking how to be disciplined. And I hope you join me uh, for this time. I hope you enjoy it as much as I think I'm going to enjoy it. It sounds like an interesting 
um, study to, to look at that's practical as we're going into the new year, um, as we're, you know, having like 11 months ahead of us, uh, God willing, being able to have a year of victory in the Lord and in our own personal lives uh, to the glory of God and to just grow in our faith walk in God. Because what we do is a response to what we believe. So what you believe about Jesus is going to show up in your life. Um, and the, the, the life of Jesus is going to be reflected in how you live to the glory of God. You know, it's about time that we have people looking at Christians and saying, wow, this person's lifestyle um, is disciplined in a healthy way. They're not even obsessing about it. You know, it's who they are. And um, it brings honor and glory to God. And you could say, but for the grace of God, there go I, because I don't like to exercise. I don't like, you know, uh, I'm normally eating my brains out, you know, but through Christ, I'm able to accomplish and to do all, overcome, overcome um, these excesses and the things in my life that in the past weighed me down. So that's it from me, beloved. We'll pick up again tomorrow. I hope you're doing well and you're having an amazing, amazing day. God loves you. Take care.